How y'all doing? For this video, I'm going to show off some miniatures that go on the theme of undead. And to explain how I came to collect these is kind of um, multifaceted. Um, I was looking on eBay, and, and I was looking at old-fashioned miniatures. I'm talking about from defunct companies, Heartbreaker, Ratham, Grenadier, and just see what I could find. And I found a few miniatures that I was like, ooh, I wouldn't mind having that as neat as it looks. And the reason what inspired me to get them was, well, one of them was looking, rereading this comic. This is Elric, The Ruby Throne, a French adaptation of Michael Moorcock's classic hero uh, by Julian Blondel, Paul, um, Pauli, um, Wreck and Beset side, and there's a scene in this I think is neat. Just give me a second to flip through those pages. I am, um, I'll review this in time, you know, if you're all interested. I already did Elric, but I've never done these. And there's a scene right here where Elric summons the undead to it, you know, from the oceans and attacks um, the barbarian hordes about to raid the city of Imrir. It's a very cool scene, you know, we see further along. You know, they're attacking the ships. And when I started rereading this, cool close up on the eyes and all that, and when I um, reread this and at the same time looking, you know, well, not at the same time, but later I was looking at eBay, looking at the old miniatures. So I saw that and I saw these undead miniatures that kind of has that good classic sword and sorcery um, dark fantasy look to them. So I decided to, um, you know, after looking at these, I picked out a few and I decided to buy them. And that's the, how I came to these four miniatures I'm going to show you. So, you know, so let's begin. Okay, so the first one here is from Heartbreaker Miniatures. Uh, this is a company that's no longer um, in effect anymore. They closed down some time in the past. This is a skeletal leader. Um, I'll Link it down below. There's this miniature archive page I found that shows um, old-fashioned miniatures and a part number. This is 6506 for those who are interested. Skeletal Leader. Very nice, cool look of what I'm looking for. And um, let's see, nice, you know, armored up, fancy headdress, shield, but no design on top. So I'll need to sign if I need to paint something on top of that or just find something from my old parts box and then see if I could, that will that's be fitting that I can put on top so we'll see then and I'm um, thinking about some dark armor with some bronze shoulder pads and stuff like that so kind you know again think sword and sorcery think for Zeta um, and a lot of those types of art and, and stuff like that but that's um you know again skeletal leader by Heartbreaker Ministries next two are from Rafam R-A-F-M and again this is a defunct company these this one right here is from the Shadow and Steel box sets. I guess these are box sets of uh, various themes, um, like Wizards um, box set and stuff like that. This one, like these are Vampires of Tandalore. I don't know if there's a book sub a supplement that goes with it. Maybe it's just a nice theme that you could buy for whatever you use. This is uh, the mini this um, miniature is Veratu Mikto Undead Champion. He's one of the miniatures in the box set, but it was I guess according to the miniatures website I found where it was, they were putting their own individual blister packs in time. Uh, you know, part number two oh oh four B. And again, this is you know, his nice axe, you know, sword, shield, shield has detail on it. And again, you know, just very nice and inspirational to the sword and sorcery undead look I'm looking for. So very nice one. The next one, I've known about this since it came out back in the 90s. And this is a vampire, a gothic vampire from, again, from Raffin Miniatures. He's from the Vampire Lords series that they, you know, brought about. Of course, it's about, it has means they're vampires. But this is uh, part number 3887. Very nice pose like that. I remember seeing this in. War Games West catalog, which was an, for those of you who don't know, um, if you had to buy before in, on, online um, ordering, for those who didn't have quick access to a gaming store like I did, we ha we ordered from a catalog from War Games West, which is stationed in Albuquerque, New Mexico, also out of business. But in there was a nice thick catalog. You get periodically it has all sorts of games, role-playing, board games, and of course, miniatures. And this was printed on like newspaper um, quality paper and it had a lot of grainy black and white photos of many, but not all the miniatures available. And this one was one of them. And through that black and white grainy photo, I looked at this and I was like, this reminds me of Kane from Blood, o Blood Omen Legacy of Kane series. You know, if you look at the right distance, you can see where I was inspired to do that. Now, I just saw 
a, you know, flowing robe, of course, and you know, a sword up in the hair. I figure if I got this, I figure I could easily paint this as Kane. And now that I got the miniature, I'm, I'm not disappointed, but I guess it would be difficult because he's now that I see it, you know, he's got that, um, that gothic plate armor that's very common in vampire miniatures, and uh, doesn't deter me. I guess I could still work with the colorations of Kane, but I may go my own way. I'll see what I can do. But again, even for just even besides the Blood Omen, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, there was um you know it still has a wonderful um, dark fantasy thing that goes with the theme of these miniatures. So that's the Vampire Lord from Raphim. This one will be easier for you to find because Reaper Miniatures made this. This is made um, last year or so. This is Rictus the Undying, Part 07001. For the, um, I'll, I'll try and link this one down below. This one's still commercially available and fairly cheap. Normally, miniatures like this would be like seven, eight bucks. This is around five from the gaming store I got it from. But it's a good armored up skeleton. You know, um, let's see. Sword is not perfect. It's kind of you know broken, chipped, and all that. So just kind of give it a worn, um, dirty look. Uh, to, uh, rust, you know, maybe rusted look with the armor. Never done too much rust. But I'll see what I could. Let's see what I decide to do. So. Again, so it's Rick to see Undying. I think it complements very well with the um, uh, with what I'm gathering here. So, so here you go. Here's all four of those, and I just glad I got these, especially the um, Vampire Lord. I've always wanted that miniature, but I'm pretty happy with these um, other two as well. And when I saw Rick this in the gaming store, I figured he would complement beautifully with these. I haven't painted too much undead. I got a vampire from Mordheim, and I collected um, these undead from a defunct game called Keltos. You know, the game didn't last very long, but I got some undead from there. And but I'll see how I'll do how I, well I'll do these and how they turn out, and I'll show you here in a short. Let's see what the results. Okay, let's show, let's see what we got here. Let's start with the order that we went in here. We'll go with the Skeletal Champion by Heartbreaker. And, well, pretty nicely done, pretty much as I planned. Yeah, I decided to give it, you know, both a silver armor and sort of a gold with a overall uh, brown wash. I think uh, Agax Zerk Shade by Gaines Workshop. And give it a little highlights here and there. And again, pretty simple, straightforward. I'm pretty happy with that one. Next one, we'll go with the Raffin Miniature, Baratu Mikto, Undead Champion. And this one I think I use a little um, Border Town Black Shade, you know, just a, um, oh, um, some black ink and then water it down and coat it. Highlights here and there, give it a nice dark purple row. I like the way the shield turned out here. I painted an overall darkened metal and used the black, or, you know, no, I think I did use the brown shade on this one as well. Or you could use a combination of two, sort of to give it that darkened look. So yeah, darken the shield and then you know highlight the skull and everything. Turn out quite nice. And again, the simplicity of it, you know, they don't have to be the most extravagant like today's current games workshop stuff to be pretty effective for your purposes. So there you go. Now we go with the other Raffin miniature, the Gothic Vampire. I was actually pretty happy about this. I okay, I originally wanted to see if I could paint it like um Kane's original armor and blood omen legacy came couldn't quite do it. So um what I so I went wherever. I sort of darkened the shield uh, darken um armor, little bronze highlight, the sword, you know, basic sword, red gem and a hilt. Sorry, pummel, and a little fiery effect on the um runes, which are on both sides. 
Now the internal cloak, okay, we got a nice little muted shaded blue and highlights. Armor, you know, I couldn't quite do the red. If you look at Blood Emblem, like Zay Kane, the iron armor Kane wears, it's sort of an iron and red male. Since he didn't have the quite red male on his arms, uh, you know, it gave it bare arms. I'm actually really impressed by the face of this, you know. Um, I'm not, I haven't done too well on pallid flesh, but this one works nicely. I, let's see, I give it a, um, I think I started off with a gray, highlight it with bleach bone, and then use um, Reaper Miniatures Vampire Flesh for the highlights. Gave him white hair. So, not quite came from Lacey, it came, but um, I'm happy with it. It's a nice dynamic pose, very dramatic effect. Uh, for those of you curious, the, um, the this and the other two miniatures came with, with um, this one didn't come with its own base other than the one that's standing on the rock. It's, this is all pewter. I just glued it to this plastic base and put a little texture on it. The other two have um, originally had square bases. I didn't like, they're the square bases with a with a corner to corner slit towards them. I didn't want to pose at that odd angle so I just put on a round base with a straight yeah check and orient as I want so just in case you're curious about that and for the final one Rictus the Undying and again nice darkened armor um, you think you use a blackened steel and dark and um, use a little black or brown wash and then highlighted it on the edges um, let's see nice darkened sword the shield, um, the interior I used two shades of, I think, a, a dark bronze and then a lighter bronze on top of that. Um, and for the record, that sort of half moon glowing effect, I actually painted that on with three different shades of steel. So it looks like it was always lights from above there. Let's see. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty simple, straightforward one. Gave it a nice brown cloak. And just works all nicely, you know. And there you go. It's all four of them. All right, so here's all four of the undead characters I've uh, collected. Uh, just a nice little theme of just some um, undead warriors for any heroic fantasy setting you want to bring about. And like the um, lizard man, I did a, you know several videos ago. I just just went on this theme and maybe you grab more. I see some selections of um, recent ones from Reaper Minis that will go great with these. But here you go. I'll show a slideshow at the end of this. I'll link the pages down below to you know the website for the miniatures and all archives I and for the Reaper. Um, for in case you're curious, you know to look for them. All right. Thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.